Hello juniors, today we're going to see electronic assignment 33, which is applications of rational functions. This is probably one of the last electronic assignments about this, this topic, about rational functions. Um, so basically what we're going to do in this class is um, see how we can apply the concept of rational function to solve different types of problems. Okay, so um, let's go directly to the examples. So, um, for the first example, it says, using the least common denominator of all the fractions in the equation, solve this. So, basically, what we need to do is solve that, e uh, that equation, right? Solve means find the value of or values of x for this equation. Okay, so, how can we solve this? The first thing we need to do, whenever we have an x in the denominator, since we want to solve for x, that is, find the value of x, we need to leave the x alone, right? We must have this, all of the x's on the numerator, okay? So the first thing I want to try to do is to take all of the x's to the numerator in order to be able to solve this, right? In order to do that, I, for, I first need to find the the, the the common factor, the, the, the common denominator between these two fractions, right? And if you remember how to find the common denominator of um, of these terms, the common denominator would be directly, in this case, 2x times x plus 1, right? It's just uh, the product of these two terms. So in the first fraction, remember the rule, it's the common denominator divided by this this term times this one over here, right? So uh, 2x times x plus 1 divided by 2x would give us x plus 1. And x plus 1 times 3 is 3 times x plus 1, right? And in the second case, minus, we have a minus there, minus... And we do the same thing, right? The common denominator, 2x times x plus 1, divided by x plus 1, uh, which would give us 2x, and then 2x times 2x, that's, let me write the whole process, this is 2x times 2x, right? And this is equal to negative 2. Okay, so then we can uh, distribute this, right? Do the product, and this would be equal to 3x plus 3 minus 4x squared divided by 2x times x plus 1. And this is equal to negative 2. Okay, so now that we have a common denominator, you see that I can take all of this denominator multiplying up here, right? And with that, I will already... Um, I would I will already solve the problem of having the x in the in the denominator, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that to the to the other side, multiplying. So this would be equal to a three x plus three minus four x squared equals negative two times two x times x plus one. Then if I uh, keep on expanding this, this will be 3x plus 3 minus 4x squared equals, this is negative 4x times x plus 1. And if I keep on expanding this, this would be 3x plus 3 minus 4x squared equals negative 4x squared minus 4x, right? And now I can organize terms. You see that, for example, the x, the x squared eliminates, right? If I take one to the other side, it will eliminate with the other one. And, okay, I think that's basically it. What I can do next is take this term to the left side, and this 3, I could take it to the right side, okay? To order terms, so this would be equal to 7x equals negative 3. So finally, the value of x would be x equals negative 3 over 7. And this will be the result. So we solved for x, we, we found the values of x, which satisfy this equation. In this case, it's only one value, negative 3 over 7, yes. 
Okay, so that's one type of application of a rational function. Let's go to a, a second example. It says, if f of x equals x minus 4 over 3x minus 2, find, remember this, the inverse of that function. Okay, so I want to find the inverse of the function. So if you remember the steps to find the inverse of a function, the first step is basically to write the function as y equals x minus 4 over 3x minus 2. The second step was to switch y's with x's and x's with y's. So we're going to have x equals y minus 4 over 3y minus 2. Then the next step is to solve for y, that is leave the y alone. So the first thing I, I see I can do here is take all of this term in the denominator up here by multiplying. So this would be equal to x times 3y minus 2 and this is equal to y minus 4. y minus 4. So then if I distribute this I will get 3xy minus 2x equals y minus 4. And then uh, remember my objective is to solve for y, that is leave the y alone. So I will take all of the terms that have y to the left side and all of the terms that do not have y, I will take it to the right side. So this would be equal to 3xy minus y equals positive 2x minus 4. Okay, and here I can take out a common factor of y. So this would be y times, let me do this down here, y, y times 3x minus 1, and this would be equal to 2x, 2x minus 4. So finally, the last step would be to solve for y, right? Let me do that. Mm. Okay, so I'll continue this up here. Remember, my objective is to uh, solve for y. So I can take this term dividing to the, to the right side, right? So I'm going to write this as y equals 2x minus 4 divided by 3x minus 1. And this is the inverse function. So I can write this as f minus 1 of x, the inverse of f, equals 2x minus 4 over 3x minus 1. And this would be the inverse function of the rational function. Okay, so that's another type of application for this for this type of function, right? 2x minus 4 over 3x minus 1. Okay, perfect. Finally, let's see a real life application of a rational function by solving this example. It says, Chas and Dev are planning to print their sports team logo on baseball caps and sell the caps. They have to hire a printing machine which costs $500 and it will cost them an additional $5 for every cap to be bought and printed. Okay, so these are the costs. $500, the cost of the machine and $5 for each cap that they want to uh, buy to print, right? to print on. So part A says, develop a model which links the number of caps they produce with average cost per cap they incur. Okay, so if I want to calculate, basically what I want to do is make a, uh, an equation that predicts the or that models the cost per cap of, uh, of this situation, right? So uh, we, we can call this, um, let's say that C, C is cost per cap, right? So uh, just by thinking about the situation, we say that the cost per cap would be um, the cost of the machine, which is a fixed cost, right? 500, it doesn't depend on the amount of caps I I, I buy, right? And then there's an there's a cost of $5 per cap that I buy in order to print, right? So this would be plus 
5 times x, we're going to call x, I'm going to add that here, x would be number of cups, number of cups. So my cost is $500, which is a cost, the fixed cost of the machine, plus 5 for each of the cups I produce, divided by x, which is the number of cups, right? Remember that the, the, this cost C is a cost per cap. If I want to find the total cost, then it would just be 500 plus, plus 5x. But since I want to know what is the cost per cap, I divide this total cost by the amount of caps I have for me to be able to uh, calculate the exact cost of producing each of these caps with the, with the printed logo of the baseball team, right? So this will be the equation, and, and, and if you notice, this is the equation of a, a rational function, right? So this is a model, right? If you want, you could also write this as y equals 500 plus 5x divided by x, the same thing, right? I just call it c because we're talking about cost. Okay, then for part b, it says use your GDC to determine how many caps must be printed and sold if they are to sell the caps at seven seven dollars per cap and just break even and just break even okay so what we can do here is use the GDC in order to graph this function and then see see where this seven dollars which is a cost per cap uh, lies on the graph right so let me go to the calculator just for a second. If you look at the calculator right now, uh, we're gonna go to menu graph, right, menu five. And let me raise this. We're gonna plug in our function, which is 500, 500 plus 5x, 5x divided by x, right? And then, as a second function, we're gonna uh, plot the, the horizontal line y equals seven, right? Because that's what we're asked in the problem. So we draw this, and we see that, well, we don't actually see the function because our scale is probably wrong. So I'm gonna change the scale, go to shift v win, and for x, for x minimum, maybe we could leave this as zero or maybe negative one in order to be able to see what happens maximum uh, we're talking about number of caps so this is would probably be i don't know let's say 50 scale of one and for the y let's say this should be y is a cost per cap so let's start from negative one although we don't we don't, we don't consider negative values and for maximum let's say um, I don't know, maybe a reasonable number could be 50 as well. Scale of one. Okay, so let's draw this to see if we can see this. Yes, there we can see a function, but still we cannot see the intersection. So maybe our X scale is still very small. So let's put this 200, let's say, and see what happens. Okay, here I think we can see the intersection. Let's try, if we go to shift, G solve and intersect F5. No, we still cannot see the intersection, so I need to draw this again, changing the scale. Let's put here 500. We should be able to see it right now. Yes, there is an intersection. Okay, so shift G solve intersect, and there you have the intersection. It says 250, right? It's 250 and y equals 7. So uh, that would be the point where the, the line intersect, right? Which means that in order to produce or in order to be able to sell set, uh, caps for $7 each, I need to produce 250 caps, okay? So let's go back to the assignment right now. And I'm going to make a small sketch here of the situation just to just to have a, an evidence of what 
we just did in a calculator. So here we're talking about x, and here we're talking about the cost, right? So the, the, the rational function is something kind of like this, right? You already know the shape of a rational function. And, and when the cost is 7, let's assume it's somewhere around here, let's say. Let's say and this is 7. So we draw this line and in, it intersects the function right here. And according to a calculator, this value is 250, right? So that means, let's read the question again. Use your GDC to determine how many caps must be printed and sold if they are to sell the caps at $7 per cap and just break even. Okay, so if we, if we want to sell it for $7, we need to print 250 caps, okay? So that will be the final answer. We need to print to print 250 caps. If you pay attention, you can see that you can also solve this without using a calculator and solve it algebraically. How? The cost is given, right, which is $7. So we just need to find the value of x, right? Let's try doing that right here. I'm going to do it with a different color. Let's say $7 is a given data. So this is equal to 500 plus 5x divided by x. And now if I solve for x, I'm going to take this x up here first. So this would be equal to 7x equals 500 plus, plus 5x. And then I solve for x. I take this to the left side. So this would be equal to 2x equals 500. So finally, the value of x is 250. Okay. So that's another, this is caps. That's another way of solving this problem, right? You can solve it algebraically in case you're not allowed to use calculator, for example. So this is caps and this is dollars. Okay, so that'll be it, uh, juniors, for this class. Here, I, I, I just left uh, some instructions of how to use the calculator to solve this problem. Uh, if you want to take a look at this in case you're not sure of how to do something, you have all of the steps detailed right here. Okay, so uh, that's it for today's video. Um, I hope this was clear enough for you. If not, please let me know and we can clear the doubts in future live sessions.